November or something. Isn't that a thing? Is, I think, yeah, but yes, it is. Maybe we'll do November. There we go. Yeah. yeah. So um, I'm going to be, I'm going to be suspicious. <laughs> big J journalism. Okay. So I look at all these Big Ten schedules that come out. Oh, yes. Uh, funny. I know where you're going with yes, this. The conference gives Ohio State their only national championship contender a cakewalk for two months. Let's be fair, though. Let's be fair. Ohio State was going to be double-digit favorites against any Big Ten team okay. anyways, yeah. right? So I, oh, I don't know. Time out. They got rolled by Purdue and Iowa last two years. That doesn't mean anything. This team has gone belly up the last two years and gotten rolled um, against average teams. You're No, that's wrong. Actually, last Who? year they were the first team in the history of college football to go 9-0 and through a regular season, through a nine-game conference uh, schedule, and win the conference championship game. So go 10-0 and through a conference that schedule. Was the year but before. that's okay. The year before, yes, they Roll. did lose to Purdue. Hey, in the year, you, you said the last two years, okay. not two years ago. Okay. The point Just, being, Big know, Ten gave them a striving for to the national championship. I, I don't know if you can say that they went out of their way for Ohio State. Here's what I will I will tell you. I I felt like the top two teams in each division got really solid crossover games. All right. Okay. So when you're crossing over to the other division, so for instance, I think that the three most favorable schedules in the in the kind of new iteration of the Big Ten schedule were Ohio State because they don't have to play themselves. <laughs> then you've got Minnesota and Wisconsin. And the reason is because Minnesota, Minnesota and Wisconsin are, I think, the two best teams in the West, and they miss both Penn State and Ohio State from the opposite division because yeah. I think Penn State's a little better than Michigan this year. Meanwhile, the two losers, the team that got absolutely hammered, everyone's been talking about nebraska but michigan as well those are the only two schools that have to play the top two teams from the opposite division and then in michigan's case they also have to play ohio state and penn state in their own division <clears throat> so jim harbaugh was very outspoken against the conference do you think the big 10 stuck it to him a little you know i i want that to be true just because i'm like i'm with you right like the college football i want these types of rivalry and, and yeah. conspiracy things to be to just be accurate so it's it like there. hey scott frost and jim harbaugh we're gonna stick it to you but in reality the guy who pushed the hardest and maybe did the most from a coaching perspective to bring the big 10 back to a point where we're gonna play fall football was ryan day at Ohio State. And in fact, his AD was very prominent. Their doctors were prominent. All Their right. president was prominent. If you want to if you wanted to pin why is the Big 10 playing football this fall? It is because Ohio State pressed as hard as they did and then they got what would be considered a favorable schedule. Okay, it's like, you know, it's really funny in the NFL right now because of Lamar's success and Kyler Murray's success. Mm -hmm. Uh, even somebody like me, which was always kind of pocket guys win, little mobility fine, don't need it. I kind of look around at Justin Fields at Ohio State, and I'm like, this Trey Lance kid at North Dakota, and I'm like, uh, boy, you got to run. Yeah. Although, let's talk Trevor Lawrence, because Clemson's the best team I've seen so far. I don't have much to work with, sure. but he's great. In your years of doing college football, is Trevor Lawrence the best prospect? No, I still think luck was... You think um, luck was better than I him? I think luck was in the, in the years I've covered college, but it is razor thin. I hesitate there. Part of the part of the issue is that I don't think Trevor has had the level of competition, in particular in the ACC. Right? Like I I don't know <laughs> the Citadel. I'm not getting much. We're throwing against. No, air, it's, a, it's been a junk conference for four years. So, but that being said, man, I mean, he's as good of a prospect as he's I've got seen. a better arm than luck. He well, luck had a a very good arm. Luck was was bigger, a little bit more physical, a little bit more mobile. Although we saw last year in the semifinal against Ohio State, the athleticism from from Trevor. I think Trevor is and probably should be the number one pick. But you bring up a great point because in, in today's NFL, it's no longer we have to get the pocket passer. Now what we have to do is we've got to get the best football player for the position. And Kyler is proving that out. Lamar is proving that out. These guys are great throwers of the football and, and are showing the acumen to pass the, the football at a requisite level and the athleticism. And that's where Fields pops in because Justin Fields got so much better last year as a passer from week one all the way until they played No, Michigan. Justin Fields looks like the NFL today he this is what the nfl he can make the throws he's sturdy and he moves well and, and he moves really well but but more than anything 
I, I just felt like his ability to throw the ball, in particular downfield, got so much better last year. And you got to credit Mike Yurchich, who's now the offensive coordinator at Texas, but also Ryan Day for their development of him. Because I will tell you this, not this last spring, but obviously the spring before it, when he first arrived from Georgia, Colin, I was standing with Ryan Day at a spring football practice in their indoor facility in Columbus. Look how easy he throws. But I got to tell you, he was he was – throwing the football on the field and Ryan goes, we got a lot of work to do. He was not a finished product coming from Georgia. And I think that, that the system, the coaching Ryan, Mike Yurchich, and then Justin Fields work ethic yeah. brought him to a point where he's as good of a passer down the field as anybody in college football, which is why it's not going to be just totally cut and clear who the number one pick is for some of these NFL teams yeah. uh, come next spring. Yeah, he's good. All right, so listen, SEC play starts this weekend. Yeah. Uh, this is the, the shocker of college football. Alabama doesn't get to play Panera bread seven <laughs> times. So Alabama got a little bit of a, a tough schedule. Well, not only a, a tough schedule, everybody in the SEC. This is going to be, a, a, I think, the most interesting year to watch SEC football ever because so no, they're all going to no, play 10 games. No cupcakes. No cupcakes whatsoever. League only. Just to give you a sense of how different it is. Nick Saban only twice during his tenure at Alabama has had to play five consecutive weeks without a buy, a group of five, or an FCS. That is ridiculous. Okay. That's the most. And it's only happened twice where he had to play five consecutive Power Five opponents on consecutive weeks. By the way, did you know one of those was 2012? Guess which opponent was fifth? Texas a and with Johnny Manziel, and they lost that game. Yeah. Because they couldn't defend Johnny Manziel. Last two years, so 2018 and 2019, for Alabama, the most consecutive weeks that they played Power 5 opponents was three. That is brutal. This is what drives me nuts about Alabama. I'm not saying they're not good, but it's like Tom Brady. You put him on the road in the playoffs, he's 500. His, div his division had no question helped Tom Brady. Sure. Nick Saban manipulates this thing around. He's just looking for a, a truck stop. He can roll nine guys out and win. So they're going to open the year with six straight consecutive weeks Who, against the SEC. Good teams? Uh, yeah, they I mean, they're, they're all pretty good. Remember, the SEC is deeper this year because Tennessee is better. Kentucky's Ooh, better. Florida's better. Is better. Florida is better. You still have Georgia. You still have Auburn. You still have um, uh, LSU. Uh, watch uh, Alabama get unveiled a little bit. Maybe, but no, I don't know if it'll matter because remember, we're still taking the four best teams. I think this is the year that we might get a two loss team into the college football playoff. I'm okay with that. Because the committee's going to say, listen, with that schedule, they're still one of the four best teams. Like, and I'm okay with that as I well. I like Saban's Aflac commercials, but I've, I hate his schedule. The schedules are, are terrible. Brutal. Embarrassing, kind of. You know the last time he went on the road in a true non conference road game? Penn State in like 2011, I think it was. Brutal. That's brutal. Like You're it, right. Nick's running a schedule like he doesn't think we watch the games. <laughs> He's like, hey, I'm, I'm pulling a fast one on everybody. Nobody's watching. No, Nick, we're, everybody's watching because you're the program of note. He doesn't go on the road. Georgia, by the way, got hammered in their schedule. They're going to play five ranked teams in a six-week stretch. Whew. Wow. I can't wait to watch that play. That's going to be great. All right, what do you got this weekend? I've got at Oklahoma. We've got Kansas State at Oklahoma, we hope. I was in Waco last, uh, yeah. last Friday when Things that game went away. quick. So we'll, we'll see what happens. But I can't wait to watch Spencer Rattler. He, I think he's the next great college prospect he's a sophomore or a red shirt freshman. he's a red shirt freshman his arm talent is is through the i've i have not seen a young quarterback with his arm talent well, let, since come mahomes on. let's slow down now class i just said arm talent i didn't i just oh said my since God. mahomes he's got go well all you got to do is look i'll just look, i just watch the tape folks you know i listen i am here to protect the children spencer is a great athlete he is uh, you and guys his got arm him is insane you did this with joe burrow God, he was Joe Montana, and he was in diapers. Let's slow down. This Spencer Rattler's beating a bunch of teams. That Joe Burrow had the single best college football season any quarterback's ever had, and he's got the feet of Joe Montana. I don't know if his career is going to be One guy out to cares about the kids on this set. Oh, my god. I gosh. care about the kids. Oh, my god. You got gosh. him throwing them out there, making them Superman. It's like, let's slow down on Spencer Rattler. Let me just give you some perspective. Last year... Patrick Mahomes, the, the longest throw he completed in the air was 53 yards. It was in the Super Bowl to Tyree Kill. You yeah. remember the play? Yeah, it was the big yeah. play of whatever they call it, Razor or Running whatever. around, yeah. Yeah, I mean, great throw, right? And everyone's yeah. like, oh, my gosh, look at his arm. Last week, albeit against a terrible team in Missouri State, Spencer Rattler off his back foot threw a ball 52 yards in the air on the money for a touchdown. Like, his, his arm is incredible. You're, you're going to get on board. Don't worry. I mean, mm. I watched the film. I don't know what you're doing. You're, you're out there watching surfers. Great. 80 story, story build. I watch football. God. You know, you and Nick Wright, what's the point? There's no win for me. 
I'm just up. I'm up here. I'm a dartboard. You guys are just throwing heat at me all the time. Well, but I'm like a dartboard, you're easy to hit. Oh gosh. All right. Well, we run out of time. Your mic doesn't work. That's unfortunate. <laughs> it's still on. Okay. The red light's still on. Uh, by the way, the check engine light comes on. Don't freak out. Get CarShield.com. CarShield.com. No anxiety. They pay for everything. Once your warranty's over. CarShield.com. That's Joel.